Hey guys, today we are going to be looking at resumes and applications sent to me for me to give feedback to these individuals. I think there's a lot of things that we need to talk about. I'm really excited and I think even if these aren't your applications, they're going to be really helpful for those of you that are looking to apply for jobs. All right, so let's start off with Alexander's resume and you can see I've blacked out some of the private information just for privacy sake. He does not come in with esports experience, but if he was to get into esports, he's not exactly sure what he wants to do either. He's mentioned maybe player management or facility management. So with that, I think one, the things that I'm gonna have here is just gonna be helpful for anyone that doesn't have esports experience and two, how to shape non-esports experience into something esports related. So first thing I wanna say is, this is two pages. I would keep it down to one page. Just straight up one page because you want you don't need two pages to tell, to convince someone that they want you for the job. Just really keep it to one page. There's many reasons, like the person can lose the second page if they print it out. Um, if it's printed on one page, they might not flip to the back. And honestly, for entry level, you don't need more than one page of a resume. And it's all about picking the best stuff to make that first impression anyway. So you wanna put your best foot forward for the job you're applying for, right? Second thing is you have to think about what information is the most important, what you want to show and how the person's going to read it. Most likely they're going to read it top to bottom. You have a column here. Um, and the first thing I notice is your name, which is good. Your content information, which is, I don't necessarily think your contact information is super important. I think what you want to do is make the impression and then they're going to look through the resume to find your contact information. But again, you have to remember people are going to spend only a few seconds, maybe a minute looking through your resume, especially if they have a ton of resumes to get through. So I think the name is really good. I think what I'm a big fan of these objectives or uh, executive summaries. Basically, this is your chance to, in like one or two sentences, to really say like, this is what I'm about. This is why you want to hire me. This is why I'm good for your company, right? And I would put that at the top, especially for you where you don't have esports experience. I think this is really, really important where you can talk about like your passion. You can show off like why you would be a good risk, though I wouldn't necessarily say that in your resume or cover letter. But I would be like, oh, even though this person doesn't have any esports experience, because he has worked in volunteer roles that actually make him a good player manager, or something that might be more applicable for you, is if you want to be a facility manager or have some type of facility management role, like why your engineering background will help you do that in esports because you also love esports and you understand the scene and you're passionate about gaming and all these kind of things. Like those are the things that I would put at the top and your summary or executive summary or your objective, right? Okay, so talking about the objective, let's see. It says, obtain experience through a trial with a well-known and fast-paced company to both further the company and make advances into the industry. So I know this is more engineering focused, so something like this, you need to make sure it's focused on esports, but I'm just, I wanna give some feedback anyway for the objective. Um, Trial, I would say no. Un unless like really you are looking for a trial and that's something that you think is a good selling point, I would take that away. Because a company wants to hold long-term people and you don't want to give the vibe that you're just going to be there for a short period of time. Uh, Well-known is really awkward too because it's like you're looking for clout. You have to make sure your objective is like showing that what you're looking for is in alignment with the company's objectives too. Let's look at your experience. I don't know right away what I'm looking at and I don't want to read a paragraph. I like bullet points. I want to quickly get through this because you also have to remember that your resume isn't about, isn't to get you the job, it's to get you the interview, right? It's to get someone to stop and read and be interested in you and want to know more. So you don't have to sell everything about yourself. You just want to show them like, this is the quick synopsis about me. This is what I want the people reading my resume to understand. And then from there, they're gonna to go to your cover letter or they're gonna call you or email you and ask for you know an interview. That's what you need to be thinking about of how you use your resume. It's not to sell yourself to get the job. Contract accountant for 500 million privately held leading global provider of integrated industrial safety products and services. Assisted, okay, so that's one bullet point, right? Assisted in the audit of the company's 2015 financials, worked with the assistant controller to pull requested audit records, including but not limited to journal entries, invoices, bank statements, and proof of payments. Trained other contract staff during onboarding process to assist with audit work. So yeah, I would break this down into bullet points and figure out the main 
points that you did. Ultimately, I think you did a lot of information organization with lots of detail and that were very important because it's money-based and you also collaborated and trained other people. So those are like really good people skills and detail-oriented skills. That's what you need to make sure it comes across in like the two, three bullet points. So now, how can you take that stuff into your objective for like an engineering job if you wanted to continue doing those things? You make sure that you say you're like, you work, you know how to work in a fast envi- fast-paced environment. You wanna work in a fast-paced environment and hopefully the company you're applying to aligns with that and you're very detail oriented and you want to uh you know bring efficiencies to companies or something like that i'm not exactly sure what that is um you also talk about solidworks which i know that's a 3d modeling software i had to google what these are but these are certifications right um if you're gonna put microsoft excel like if you're gonna put microsoft i would say just like the whole microsoft office Visual Basics and Python, I would also separate into a different bullet point. Uh, strong basic computer knowledge seems a really, really odd. Maybe for engineering that might be important, but I don't think so. And then strong basic seems very um, contradictory. Like might as well just say like strong computer knowledge. And then also like what does strong mean? That's kind of fluffy as well. Like strong mean that you can build a ke- computer or does strong mean that like uh, you know how to run a computer and not have problems and Google Google fixes for your computer IT problems, right? I don't exactly know what that means and what that what that provides value to when you're applying for a job. Uh, I think for these volunteer experiences and leaderships, I think these are interesting. They, but I also don't know exactly what these all are. Same with personal projects. The person might not really understand what these all are. And references, I don't think these are needed on resumes because i don't again like this is not something that people are gonna be like oh i want to hire alexander so i'm gonna call his references that's not what's gonna happen during this resume process so i would also remove that oh i also skills i'm not a big fan of how most people use skills i would say like these are the things that you need to put in technical like you have professional skills and skills what's the difference between those two and i would say like what someone wants to know and skills are things that like really stand out are technical, right? Quick learner, independent worker, excellent communicator. I wouldn't say those are like you can always put those, but I'm always, when I'm looking at applications, I'm just like, really, I don't know if that's true. I have no idea if that's true. And hopefully, the objective or your experience, the way you put your bullet points for experience and your cover letter, those are the ways that I see like you've proven that you're a good communicator or you've proven that you're a problem solver or a quick learner. That's where I need to see that, right? Okay, so if you're trying to turn this into esports stuff, right? What I would first do is go to a job search site or go to the application and figure out like, hey, what are the, what are the things that people are looking for for these jobs, right? And then I'm gonna figure out how does my experience align with that? How can I convince people that my experience makes me qualified for the job posting, right? And especially when you have no experience, it's gonna be really, really hard to figure that out and it's gonna be really tricky. And you're gonna find yourself shaping like and bending the truth to like fit it. And then eventually like I've done that and I realized that, oh, I'm not qualified. I just need to build some experience and do more volunteering stuff, which that's what you definitely need to do. You need to find ways to do free work and volunteer and be part of esports organizations or like gaming things or like, whatever it is. And if you go on job websites like hitmarker.net, um, you can find plenty of volunteer, or maybe not plenty, but you can find things where people are like, hey, I, I'm an amateur org and I need player management people. And you can, it's it's a hard thing to do. It's really not easy. So being able to do that for like an amateur org, like you're going to gain experience that's very, very, very much needed, right? Facility management, I think that's gonna be a lot harder to do free work for, but you can find engineering experience that's going to fit facility management. That's gonna be a harder role to find in esports, I think, but you could also just find that like very adjacent to esports or gaming when it comes to, you know, just working for companies that just need facility people. So yeah, the big thing here, I would say the takeaways are you know, make sure you have a strong objective, make sure you're gaining the experiences that you need that fit the roles you're looking for, 
And a lot of that's gonna be free work and volunteer work, but you just need to start adding that in. And if you really do have volunteer experience or your job makes sense, uh, job experience makes sense, or you know your personal projects make sense, make sure that's listed on your resume. You don't need to say like everything you did. You just need to make sure that like, hey, I have planned player management skills because of these volunteer things. And I have uh, communication skills <laughs> based off of like this work experience or this uh, this school org that I was a part of. Like those are things you need to put out on your resume and you cannot just send them your engineering resume if you're applying for esports jobs. Make sure you don't do that. Okay, all right, so before moving on to the next one, which is from Isaac, I do wanna say I got some cool news. I am now working with Hitmarker in kind of this like affiliate program. So for the month of June, if you're watching this in June, if you apply, if you want to look at Hitmarker, which is an esports and gaming job site, kind of like uh, monster.com, just specifically for esports and gaming, um, click on the link in my description and I get a kickback for every person that signs up if you're not signed up already. So uh, it's a job site that I've used. I applied for many, many jobs. I actually got a volunteer job applying for Hitmarker way back in the day. And um, yeah, if you're looking for jobs, it's one of the places you're gonna have to be looking everywhere on social media, on LinkedIn, uh, maybe on Monster. I'm not sure if you really find stuff there. Uh, on Twitter, Facebook, on all the teams that you want to be part of their social media and their websites you're gonna be have to scouring that but hitmarker does a great job in compiling all that information and a lot of those jobs come through hitmarker and especially those volunteer jobs that you're looking for uh depending on your experience you can find that on hitmarker as well as well so click on that link thanks